Alright, hey guys, this is JPEG from Ion 4D and Organization 13, and I'm back here with part two of my whip tips and whip and flail tips and tricks tutorial. Oh, that's a mouthful. <laughs> um, for part two, I'm going to be talking about how to keep your whips clean and I'll, I'm going to start talking about expanding on different whips and flail concepts and such. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. Um, cleanliness is a very big issue, I guess, when it comes to whips and flails because lots of people just do them because they think they're easy, but they're not. They are not... Okay, <laughs> it's easy to do bad whips and flails. Um, it's easy to do this, it's easy to do this, or whatever, or whatever um but it's a lot harder obviously to do good whips and good flails um so yeah first thing get of getting good clean whips and flails is going back to the first episode stretching your wrist flexibility is very important um but i already talked about that so i'm not going to go too deep into it but essentially you want to be able to um, open your hand as much as you can when you're doing flails. I mean, whips. Flails too, I guess. Um, and make it so that when it's in its most open position, this plane, um, if I turn it to the side, it's flat. It's a flat and it's 90 degree angle. Um, so that this plane is parallel with the viewers I mean there's no flat thing right there but like it's so it's parallel with say the camera lens or their face or whatever as perpendicular with the ground if that's the angle that you're giving the show at um so you just want to make the biggest circular motion that you can um even if like even just getting in here you want it to like be big and clean and stuff and especially if you're getting back here you want them to be big and circular um so this goes into also into making sure that you're not just trying to do this um keep your elbows still you want to get your elbows into there because that really helps you throw your whips um, I can't this I'm in a sitting position. I'm sitting on a chair, so I can't do it quite as well um, But if I'm giving a stand-up show or a kneeling show as most shows are um, You really want to get your whole torso engaged into the whips and flails because that really allows you um, That really makes it so that you can Get the best and cleanest whips that you can um, this is slightly less important, important for flails because it's more of a wrist movement. Um, but depending on your style of flails, that can be very important too. Um, I see a lot of body movement, um, mostly among my fellow Hawaii Glovers. Um, I never used to do this body movement thing and I thought it looked kind of weird. Um, but once I started doing it after getting a few shows from Kevin Puppet, uh, shout out to you, man. Uh, it it really changed my whips and flails and everything, really, to being just so much better and so much cleaner and everything. Um, so, yeah, now that cleanliness is aside, um, I'm going to start on expansion. Um, the first way to expand on different whips and flail variations and such is to play with the placement of them um, so essentially standard whips usually take place right here backwards forwards um, double whips usually happen one here one here like that um, and if you want to talk about flails um, that usually happens here. Sometimes people bring it up here. Um, I see a lot more use, move, use of space with flails, but still not 
an especially creative amount. Um, so, okay, let's talk about whip placement. Um, you can start whips from anywhere and you can take them anywhere. Um, what I mean by that is you can say you're doing these and you're chaining them together and then just to switch something up, you bring one back here, you bring it back here for a little bit and then bring it back. Um, this can also go like that. You have a whip that starts back here, comes forward and then back. And then you have another one that's just staying in front. So that looks cool. Um, I have a combo that I use a lot that's just based off of backwards whips, but it's brought back here. It starts from back here and it sweeps forward. Well, the right hand sweeps forward and then the left hand stays here. Um, and it's actually doing um, flail whips, which is the type of whip where um, you keep your fingers together rather than spreading them. That's an opinion of which one you think looks better. I use them both actually. Um, but it looks like this and it's a really cool like tornado type thing. I haven't named it or anything. But yeah, basically what I'm trying to say is play with the whip placement of your whips. Sometimes just randomly putting one here. Um, that didn't look very good, but that's that's how to expand, guys. You do stuff that doesn't look good until you find something that looks good. Um, so sometimes just bringing bringing a hand out of the loop for a second and bringing it in with something or doing something like that can just create all new trippy stuff. Um, even putting it like crossing your hands. Uh, putting stuff under your elbows, putting stuff behind your back. I don't do that a lot, but you know, just flails too. Just trying different stuff. You know, just play around with it. <laughs> All right, that's the end of part two, guys. Be sure to check out part three. Um, if you haven't watched part one yet, before watching this, um, you're bad. You should have done that. But yeah, go watch part one. Um, yeah, have a nice day, guys.